when you love the soul, you will reap a hundredfold. Nothing that you do counts for the difference. And that was the key that he had that unlocked the door because in that opportunity he got exactly the work for what he lost. Every time you are the wilderness, you are never here. And I brought you here because I want you to do something. And the forest. I'm telling you, this ministry is going to be a large ministry that God's going to give you a goal to plant 100 churches in. God has something in store for this church as a whole. We see new seasons coming and we see new birthdays happening because I know there is a window that's opened in the spiritual atmosphere over this church where things are going to prosper, where things are going to be accelerated into their destinies.
So I'll, I'll go very slowly because I want you to understand. Some of you know the know the key, but some of you get confused because it doesn't work unless you understand the entire thing. Mark 4.13. one key. It's the key of the seed. Amen. What he is saying was 14. The sower sowed the word. So the key is the seed of the word that comes into our life. The moment it is activated you understand that is the key. When you allow that seed to germinate that means to go and allow it to work in your life the moment you allow that seed of that word there will be a season I'm using difficult words it may not be difficult but some of you will understand this that's why I've kept this as an English service separate because it's not difficult okay I'll make it simpler, but there are some terms. Gas station period. Gas station. Gas station. Gas station. Gas station. Gas station. When the seed is actually buried, this is where most of the people fail. Because the purpose of the mystery of the kingdom is that it is hidden from those that are wise. But it is kept for the flesh. If you get this, the wise don't understand because the wise want to see things to change at that moment. But the key of the kingdom is that when you sow that seed, any seed that is sown in your kingdom, even in the world, there is a key that happens. The key is after the seed is sown. Mark 4, 26. This is always what happens to the seed. So is the kingdom of God as if a man should cast seed into the ground. What is the kingdom? This is the mystery of the kingdom. When your seed as the word of God is sown into your life, okay, you may not see the fruits of it coming in your life. That's where a lot of people miss out because they come from the world where things want to change. They change in a matter of things that happen immediately. But in the kingdom, verse 27, And should sleep and rise night and day, and the seed should spring and grow, he knoweth not how. What is it saying? There is the seed that is not seen when it is sown, when it is not going to show anything as though you are sleeping, as though the word has not bore any fruit. But at the same time, what is actually happening? 28 For the earth 
real for proof of herself. Now see the process. I want you to catch this process. There is a process. If you have sown the seed, okay, first comes the blade, then the ear, and after that the full bone in the three stages. You see nothing happening, you're sleeping. But the work, while you are sleeping, the seed is working. As much as you are not seeing the delays of your not understanding that the seed is actually working can confuse you to the point of what Paul keeps reminding that do not be weary in sowing seed. Because the kind of impression that sometimes we feel is that while we are sleeping, nothing is happening. But if you keep understanding the principle of the kingdom is that when you when you sow a seed, John 12, 24, this has to happen. If you keep doing this mystery of the kingdom, whenever you sow, you are not only forgetting about what is going to come, but you are actually rejoicing because the principle of the seed is that it has to die. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and that means when you have sown the seed, it is as though nothing has happened. But be assured that in the kingdom of God, whatever you sow, it always turns from death to resurrection. But when it is death, you don't give up. Things are not going to be seen. But while things are not seen, you keep sowing and believing because the same seed that you sow has to move from death and it keeps but if it die it brings forth much fruit you will see this principle nothing is happening when it is sown you are believing that is the key because while you are believing you will reap the resurrection. If you lose your faith, you will lose your harvest. What is the enemy after? Harvest. Thank you. Thank you. He's after your faith. Because if he can take your faith, he can have your harvest. Your harvest cannot come until you have the faith while things are dead. While things are not seen, you have to still believe in the unseen. That is the key that Paul always used. Every seed that he sowed. Galatians 6 verse 7 this is one principle I want you to pay attention. This is always, this is not an Old Testament scripture, this is a New Testament because sometimes we miss out thinking it's to do with it. Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also make. You got another version? Living well. Do not be deceived and deluded and misled. God is not, God will not allow himself to be smeared, to strong, to stay or mock by mere intentions of perfection. He in every he deludes himself who attempts to delude God for whatever a man sows that and that only is what he will be. What is the what is the amplified coming here? That to every seed there is going to be a harvest. Now the next thing is the key. Verse 7, verse 8. The one who sows to please his sinful nature, 
from the nature, you will need destruction. But the one who sows to please the spirit, the spirit will be the life. This is where either death, if death works in you, there is going to be resurrection life. What is the seed that you sow at that time? Is it going, is it sowing in your spirit or is it sowing in the flesh? Because to everything that you are doing, there is going to be a harvest. When you learn to die to yourself, this is important. When you learn to die to the self, you will live in the spirit. Because in the spirit, you can't sow in the self. You have to sow in the spirit. Because the spirit of God is the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. If your seed is sown in the spirit, it will be resurrected. If it is sown in the flesh, it will not bring life, but bring damnation. That's where verse 9. What is Paul repeating? I'm going very slowly for some of you because if you will see now what Paul is doing. Verse 9. Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Now here, verse 10. Therefore, as we have the opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of the Here is the context. Your sowing in the church, in the spirit, the connection of being weary is that in the church, you will get tired. Because in your family is the first place that you will face opposition. You will see challenges within yourselves. But if you allow yourself to die to yourself and serve others, you will reap the maximum. What he is repeating is that first and foremost, keep doing good in the house of God. Because your challenge is, if it works in the house of God, it will work outside. You will see more that is going to change. Paul was most effective because he saw the most where he was opposed. Wherever you are most opposed will be in your house within your own people. And it is in that place when you are dying to yourself that you will reap the resurrection. Amen. So the key, again I'm repeating to you, the key is of the seed. The seed always has a period that you don't see anything happening. In that period when you don't see anything happening, do not allow what you see to define what you keep doing because if you keep walking by faith the seed that dies God will raise it up as long as you don't keep you don't get tired but you keep walking and doing the right thing because in season how does Paul turn the seed into a harvest Verse 16. Go on, one verse before. All this in those scriptures, he said, it is not, the seed is not what is seen from the outside. The seed is what is happening in the inside. Because while I am sowing, it is not my circumcision or uncircumcision that is seen. What is seen, catch this, is verse 17. If 
finally let no one cause me trouble, for I bear on my body the marks of What is the seed of Paul? Oh, this is the ship, that's why some of you are. What is the seed of Paul? What is the seed of Paul? The scars that he seen in his body. Do you understand? Some of you understand seed as something that has been done. <coughs> seed is not only something that has been done, seed is something that you wear also. Amen. What you wear the marks that is on your body because you are a believer is a seed. And what is his display? I have in my body the marks. The scars that I have are my seed. I don't display the cross. I display my scars as my seed. And if I keep doing Good. in spite of the scars that I keep. I am keeping sowing my seed to see the resurrection that is coming. Amen. Turn your scars today into a seed. That's where do not run away from the kind of thing, suffering that you face because all that you suffer, if you allow it to bear in you the marks, the scars that you carry, <coughs> it is going to be something that is going to bring more glory. Amen. What is, where is it written? Second Corinthians 4, 17. Paul uses this key, not only my doing, my bearing, is a seed. The persecution that you bear, the suffering that you bear, the things that are coming against you and you are dying to it, you are bringing death. That is the seed <coughs> and the marks that you carry that he says, for our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that mark our ways. Or what is he saying? What is Paul saying? What I am bearing in my scars, the seed is going to bring a greater harvest, far greater than what I am suffering. So I don't mind wearing the seed. What is the seed that I, I carry in my body? The marks, the scars that I have been afflicted with for walking, Keeping doing the right thing and still not having the right thing happen to me. I am still going on because in the midst of all that I am receiving death that is working life of abundance. How does he do that? Verse 18.
Because from that seed, at least could have grown a shoot, a blade, the corn, it would probably have shoot in the week's time. And I we had to just give it back. Every day I used to keep watching. And nothing was happening. On the fifth day, I became very desperate. So I told my mom, I have to present it tomorrow. She said, you don't understand. I go every day to the market. They don't water this water. It is just there. It just comes. You just have to keep it there. And don't watch it every day. Just believe it. On the fifth day, she brought for me from the market, <laughs> which I brought it back and gave it to the teacher. <laughs> The principle in the kingdom is the same. We keep wanting to see the fruit of it. As long as we are moist, ready for the Spirit of God to keep allowing us to keep doing what is right. The same seed, over a period of time without you watering it every day, will bear its fruits. It will bear its results. That's why you don't fix your eyes on the seed. You fix on eyes on not what is seen. But do you you already know that in the kingdom <coughs> things are always going to work. Even if you sleep, the fruits are going to come. Amen. So you keep doing in spite of death working, delay working you still are allowing the seed to bear its fruits. You do not, in Romans 8, 17, same principle, Paul repeats the same thing. That's why a person who is stable, what is, asking, what is God asking of you? Understand the parable of the seed. Because if you understand this parable, you will not be moved by what you see. You will not be moved. Romans 8, 17. <coughs> now if we are children, then we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. If indeed we share in His suffering in order that we may also share in His glory. What is Paul saying? If I bear in my body the seed of the suffering, I will have the harvest of the glory. Amen. So my sowing is not only what I do, but what I go through. Because everything that I go through, I can translate it to be a seed. The scars that I carry, the things that I go through, Lord, I sow it into your kingdom. Because I know that as instead of stopping to do what I need to do, I keep doing what the Holy Spirit is leading me to keep doing. And while I'm doing it, in the scars that I bear, I keep receiving what the glory God is going to bring. Because God is moving me from faith to a greater faith. From glory to a greater glory. So verse 18. The seed that you need to keep understanding, I consider not. What you consider is what magnifies back in your life. What are you considering? When you keep sowing, don't consider what is coming back. Consider that God who is watching over your seed is faithful to bring a harvest. Amen. I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. What is Paul repeating? I do not allow what I suffer I do not waste those seed. I allow that seed to allow 
the period of death to work in me that I will be able to be receiving a greater glory. So the marks that I carry, the seed that I sow is not only what I keep sowing, but what I go through. And for everything that I go through, there is a harvest. Everything that you don't react to, you are allowing it to die to bear the seed, that is, the harvest that is coming to your life. That's why I do not sow in the flesh, but I sow in the spirit. Why you are going through what you are going through? This is how Jesus did this. What did Jesus do to understand the principle of the kingdom? Mark 11, 12, the King James. Why you are sowing in your suffering? What do you need to keep sowing? The next day as they were leaving Bethany, Jesus was hungry. Isn't it interesting? The bread of life to be hungry. What is he trying to say this? There's a principle here. Verse 13. Seeing in the distance a fig tree in leaf, he went to find out if it had any food. When he reached it, he found nothing but leaves, because it was not the season for twigs. Jesus was displaying a principle of the sea. See how he showed to us what was. Then he said to the tree, May no one ever be fruit from you again. And his disciples heard him say it. This was the key that he was showing to his disciples. That when you are not seeing anything, what you speak matters. That is the seed. Because while you are suffering, what you speak carries the seed for your next harvest. So do not allow your suffering, the marks that you bear, to make you to open yourself to the flesh. But keep walking in the spirit because at that point of time you are entering into a season of harvest which you are not seeing. But your words will make your harvest become bigger. The earlier you keep without questioning what you are going, you are not receiving the fruits of it. But your words are the key. Everything has to do with the seed. The seed is your words. While you are going through the marks, the burden that you are wearing, still keep speaking because your words have authority. Instead of speaking what your situation is, speak what you want to see happen. Because when you sow that word, it is a seed. Here you will, you will see
and fruits and work to the roots. That's where they saw the next day the power of those words come to pass. That's the key of the kingdom. What is the key of the kingdom? Everything that you do is a seed. Everything that you say is a seed. Everything that you bear is a seed. So in the kingdom of oil, that seed that if you are doing doesn't bear fruit unless it dies. It doesn't bear fruit. But if it dies, how do you know it is dead? You will not see anything happening. But in the midst of nothing happening, you are still working and believing. Because Jesus said this, verse 21, And Peter called to remembrance said unto him, Master, behold the fig tree which thou person is withered away.
God is sovereign, but God gives you the authority, delegated authority to exercise the kingdom on earth because you are the seed of the kingdom. Amen. That's why your prayer is to ask the kingdom to come. The kingdom is a seed. You are the seed and when you declare the seed of this world, four times to declare what you believe, you will see it come to us. Amen. Instead of waiting for things, while you are getting what you are going through, keep declaring what you want to see. Because Jesus is the seed that the seed of David, you are the seed in the kingdom. And the same seed, 2 Timothy 2 8. Over the 
thanksgiving as a seed. Use joy as a seed. You know, people who are joyful are the most innovative people. Amen. <laughs> the maximum ideas come to people who are joyful. If you are sad, you will not get ideas. Amen. You can draw from your spirit when you are joyful. Isaiah 12 was 2. You can draw from the wells of salvation when you are joyful. What is the seed that you do? When you are passing through that situation, sow the seed of joy. God will give you innovative ideas. Your God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid for the Lord. The Lord is my strength. And my song, He also has given my salvation. Verse 3. Therefore, with joy shall you draw water out of the wells of salvation. The seed of joy brings you to receive the harvest of ideas. Amen. That's where so what you go through. So Keep sowing the seeds in the spirit. Praises. Be joyful. To be thankful. In everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God concerning you. While you are going through that, that is a seed. And every seed that you sow, it may look as though it has got no effect. But believe me, because you are an incorruptible seed. And the seeds that you sow will not be corrupted. Amen. Amen. I apply this principle. I apply this principle. Of the seed. Of the seed. As I sow. As I sow. In the spirit. In the spirit. Of today. today. I thank you. I thank you. For every pain. For every pain. That I have gone through. Every suffering, every suffering and the marks that I bear, the marks that I bear in, my body, in my body, in my soul, in my soul I turn it to you and I translate it into a seed as I sow it back with joy that every suffering that I have received is but for a moment but for the glory that I am going to claim as I keep sowing with joy into your kingdom to keep doing what is in the spirit as I speak Words of faith, words of love, words of encouragement, words of approval. I cancel every word of the accuser from the blood of Jesus. I speak, it is finished. For what I have sown, I will reap a hundredfold harvest because I have sown it into your kingdom. I receive every pain that I have gone through with the purpose that will bring you glory. I have died to the things of the world that I can reach out and reap eternal mercy, eternal life. From today, every mountain in my life, I speak to it in the name of Jesus. Mountain of doubt, be gone. In the name of Jesus, mountain of unbelief, out of my life, in Jesus' name, mountain of lack, out, in the name of Jesus, mountain of poverty, out of my life, in Jesus' name, mountain of sickness, out of my life, in Jesus' name, mountain of Lack, discouragement, out of my life, in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord. Today, as I open my mouth, you will give me 
the seeds that I need to sow. Because I'm a sower. I keep speaking the word of God out of my mouth. I will praise you at all times. With joy will I draw from the wells of salvation. From today onwards, I'm an overcomer. I'm more than a conqueror. And I declare my latter glory is greater than my former glory. I thank you, Lord. Though my beginning has been small, my latter end shall be glorious because I am not offended. I am not limited because the word of God is not bound. And I keep speaking the seed of the word of God as I lift up my eyes to the hills my help comes from the Lord I receive my help in every way in every trouble to triumph to the trial as I receive to trust you in all things not today I'm never under I'm always an overcomer I receive as I sow the words I will sow with joy with peace with love with faith because I have the faith to move mountains every word that I speak has the ability the authority, the authority and the power, and the power in the name of Jesus.